Welcome to Coding Bat video number eight. I'm Nick Parlante, I run Coding Bat. And in this video, I wanna talk about the FizzBuzz problem and lay out some uh, practice code that go with that problem. So the FizzBuzz problem is this kind of famous uh, code interview question. And it's pretty simple. It involves just a little loop and a little bit of logic. So the idea is that for interviewing programmers, it's something that someone who's experienced, they, you know, they can do it really quickly. Um, and so it works, it's not a hard problem, but it works as sort of a basic test of like, well, is this person at least moderately experienced? Or alternately, you could say, it, it's a way of just weeding out beginners, weeding out people who haven't really written a lot of code. So on this page, I wanna um, look at a series of problems that kind of play on some of the same themes as the FizzBuzz problem. And then at the end, I'm gonna try and uh, wrap it up as some constructive advice to sort of how to think about these kind of problems. So uh, here's the, uh, the problem statement. Um, I guess this is based on some traditional game that English children do when they're like dancing around the garden or whatever. Um, the idea is, uh, for the, the original problem statement is that you print the numbers from one to 100, except if a number is a multiple of three, you print fizz instead of the number. And if it's a multiple of five, you print buzz instead of the number. And if it's, both are true, if it's a multiple of three and five, then you print fizz buzz. Um, now, on, uh, for the way I'm going to do it on CodingBat, we're actually going to do something a little more difficult. Uh, instead of printing, we're going to make an array that's the right size and then fill it up uh, with the numbers. Um, so, just to, uh, I'm, I'm going to sort of build this up through a series of, of simpler problems. So, I'll, I'll try, uh, here's, uh, what is it, five problems that build, that build up to the uh, ultimate fizz problem, fizz buzz here. So, I'm going to work a couple of these. Let's see, here's a uh, fizz string. Given a string, if, the, if it starts with f, return fizz, if it ends with b, return buzz, and if both are true, return fizz buzz. So you can see that's kind of, a, it's working on the same theme. Uh, the hint here, the key hint, is that um, you really wanna use the starts with and ends with functions here. So I can say, well, if it starts with f, then I'll just say return fizz. And I'll just say return str at the bottom here. Um, and then I'll say if, uh, I'll just do the first two cases. So if it starts with F, or what was the, if the other one is uh, ends with uh, B, and return buzz. So let's just try that. So let's see here. So here fig, you know, starts with F, so we got fizz, and there's buzz. So that's the basic case. And then the ones that we're failing is this the both case, right? It starts with F and it ends with B. Um, and we're returning just to fizz, but really we want fizzbuzz. So I'm gonna make, uh, we sort of want an and to handle that case. So I'm gonna do this, not exactly the right way, but I think a way that you might do. So I'm, I copied that code and I'm just gonna sort of delete all this middle part and just do an and, so there we go. I didn't have to type anything. So this is the both case. And in that case, the answer is fizzbuzz. So I think these are these are sort of three cases, right? There's the F case, the B case, and the both case. And otherwise, we just return the string unchanged. So let's try that. This isn't quite going to work. Um, so the problem is, for example, fib, we're returning fizz. And what we wanted to return was fizzbuzz. And the problem really just has to do with the order, that we check the F case first. And suppose that the both case was true. What's gonna happen is we never get to this highlighted line because this case is true also. And so we just bail out on that first line and we never make it down here. So what's going on really is just, it's the order that you test them. It's like, oh right, you need to check the both case first and then you can check these other ones. Um, and that's, that's deliberate in the FizzBuzz problem. It's just teasing a little bit at this kind of, oh, it's a little bit tricky. Um, try and uh, make it a little more difficult. So that works. I'll say, um, by the way, that the way I wrote originally, that was just the order that they appeared in the problem statement, which seems like kind of a reasonable approach. There's definitely problems in CodingBat, other problems where I will present uh, sort of options A, B, C in that order in the problem statement, knowing that really in your code, the order maybe isn't A, B, C. Um, so FizzBuzz definitely, uh, that's, you know, old teacher trick. So that's present in FizzBuzz as well. Okay, so now, now this works. Um, alrighty, so let's, let's go back here. So um, let me. So that's this uh, basic one. So let me try. Uh, I'll do this other warm-up problem. Fizz array two. So let's see. Uh, given a number n, create and return a new string array of length n containing the strings 
0, 1, 2, etc. through n minus 1. So the trick here is, um, where, I mean, you know, one complication is that this is making an array of strings, not just an array of ints. The array of ints would be kind of the obvious approach. Um, all right, so I'm going to declare a string array here. I'll say a new string, and I want it to be length n. And then I'm just going to write, write the bog standard, you know, i equals 0, i less than n, i plus plus. So that's just, you know, absolutely standard way to talk about, you know, I don't put in any thought into that loop. That's just standard. And now this is how I'm going to talk about each element in the array from 0 through uh, n minus 1. So now I think the obvious way to write this, I mean, I'll, I'll just try it, is like that. I'm like, oh yeah, I want, what the problem statement says is, you know, I want to have 0, 1, 2, etc. Uh, through there, so let's try that. So here, this is, the error says, you know, it, it's highlighting that line. It says, type mismatch cannot convert from int to string. So the trick here is, these, these are different, right? That's supposed to be a string, that's an int, and that Java does not just convert between those automatically. So probably the one way to do it is this, say string.value of, and then I need the return at the bottom here. So that works. So I'm just taking, this is an int, I'm like, oh yeah, make a string out of it. That's like a totally fine way to do it. Um, another way, which I'll just show you just sort of for fun, is um, the plus between strings and ints happens to automatically convert. And so if you just actually just take the empty, empty string and then add i onto it, that, that's another way of doing it. Um, this seems like a little more, I don't know, it's easy, but it's, it's not quite uh, polite the way uh, that other one was. Alrighty, so hey, that, that's solved. So those are just kind of uh, warm-ups, and then the, the techniques that you'll see in these problems sort of appear all put together in this ultimate physics problem. And as I said, this problem is actually a little more difficult um, than the, just the traditional uh, print 1 through 100 way I talked about. Um, so I'm going to make a little bit of constructive advice out of this uh, series of problems. So someone with a lot of programming experience can solve FizzBuzz just like sort of instantly. And the bad news is, well, you know, that's why it's hard to fake your way through a code interview, right? They can just put these things up and say, hey, solve this. Um, and if you don't have a lot of experience, it's hard to kind of fake your way through it. The good news is, you know, it's just practice. Like, why is it that the experienced person can do that problem kind of instantly? And it's just because they've seen, you know, hundreds of loops and hundreds of if statements. And I guess the, the trick is, there's just not that many patterns for loops and if statements that come up frequently. Um, and so once you've seen a lot of them, you just kind of learn the patterns. And that's why when they see the FizzBuzz problem, it's not like they've never seen this stuff before. It probably looks kind of like and has some of the same issues of things that they've solved before. And so that's why they're able to do it fluidly. Um, so you can see me twisting this around to a you know, coding bat editorial. You know what? You can just do it. Like, it's just practice. Um, and so you just want to put the time in to have worked through a lot of problems so you can learn those patterns too. Um, so I'm going to uh, introduce this new feature, uh, Coding Bat Badges, which I'll talk about uh, separately. Um, but that's just going to be a way of recognizing that you've solved a, a large number of these kind of fundamental problems that uh, very much fits uh, as background with the uh, FizzBuzz problem. So there's something to look forward to. All right, keep on practicing.